Welcome back to another episode of RC CAD to VR. Terrence here, so glad to have you back on board. This is the episode where we design the empennage of our plane. Now, if you guys have been following from the very beginning, you know that we have been going through this step by step, and we're finally going to complete the primary structure of our airplane. Before I get into the tutorial phase though, I really need to express a huge, huge amount of gratitude to several people. Uh, Keith S. of Florida and Matt Morley, guys, thank you so much for making a very sizable contribution to the tip jar on my website, RCCAD to VR. Now, when I set up that tip jar, I honestly didn't think that anyone was going to use it. Everybody kept saying use Patreon and use these others. But I thought, you know, hey, I'll just put it out there and see what happens. And not only have you guys been amazing on providing compliments and comments and asking questions, but it's the tippers as well that just, I mean, it's incredible to think that the work that I'm putting out there is being appreciated all around the world. And it's not just Matt and it's not just Keith. Um, it's also Barkley Burger of, of Texas, Bob T of Florida, Keith Howlett of England, Leonardo Franco of Brazil, and Valentin Legrand of France. I mean, it's just, it's incredible. And with everything that's going on um, and what we're having to endure at the time of this recording, it's October, 2020. Um, this is quite incredible to me it is, that there's a community out there that is still focusing on the things that bring them joy. And as you know, for us, it's it's aviation. So guys, all of you guys, thank you so much. Really, really appreciate it. And yeah, I can't, I can't say thank you enough. All right, moving on to what everyone is here for is the actual tutorial phase. Now, we're going to start off by first creating the sketch of our empennage. And there are several things that we're gonna to have to do, and I'm gonna introduce you to several new concepts within sketching, at least new to some of you that uh, are learning uh, Fusion 360. So let's go ahead and dive in and knock out some of the very first setup steps that we need to do. We'll create our tail component, and we'll do some projections that we need in order to transfer the formers and parts of the fuselage over into our new component. Let's dive in and get this started. As you can see, this is where we left off in the previous episode. I don't have the wing turned on, but you can see we've got our wing in here. Uh, but you can see we've got the entire fuselage, and the only thing that we have to do now, of course, is add the empennage. So what we're going to do is we need to go ahead and start off by first creating a new component. So like we have before, we're going to right click, select new component, and I'm gonna go ahead and call this one tail. And make sure that the activate is enabled. And now you can see that we're active here because we've got the highlighted radio button here. And we need to do uh, one thing like we did in the previous episode, which is we need to project these two formers onto uh, some construction planes. I'm gonna show you a little bit of a trick here. You don't have to add a construction plane to the surface of the former in order to create a projection. You can simply just create the projection. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press P for project and then I'm going to select this to make sure that the face is active and you can see right through here that we've got the active face. Select it and now we're in the sketch. So you can see we've got the sketch menu and I'm going to go ahead and use that as our projection. And then press OK and then hit finish. We also want to project this former. The reason why I'm doing both of those is because this one has the wing mounting surface that is part of the wing box, but this actually has the rounded part of the fuselage. So I'm also going to incorporate this as part of the design. So again, press P for project and then activate that. And then let's go ahead and project that in and press OK and finish that sketch. 
So now you can see we've got our projections there and they are sketches within the tail. So let's go ahead and rename this one and call this one wing box. So I know that's that one and fuse, round fuse there. Okay, so that way I know what we're looking at later on down the road. Now I don't need any of these anymore, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the nose and the fuselage, so that way we're only focusing now on the empennage. Now we've been working off of the diagram from the L1011, but the L1011 has a very complicated uh, empennage or tail section. So for that reason, I've actually decided for this tutorial that I'm going to show you how to model a more traditional uh, tail for an aircraft. So I'm gonna actually use the Boeing 777's tail and I'm gonna go ahead and move these canvases in. Let's see and move that one into here so we now have both of those here. I'm gonna rotate this around so we can see the profile. And this is not gonna line up perfectly to what we've been doing so far and uh, hopefully you're not also doing an L1011. So as you can see, I went ahead and scaled this to match the size of the L1011, but I'm gonna be adding the Boeing 777's tail to it. We need to actually add in the spine and also the lower spine or the keel of the aircraft. And to do that, the first thing that I need to do is I need to create a new sketch and I need to create this on the center line. So I'm going to select create new sketch and then from our little triad origin point here, I'm gonna select this face or this planar face that way I'm working in the right place. And we need to project two points. We need to project this point and that point into our new sketch. So again, we're gonna press P for project. And I want to project that point and this point. And then let's come on down here and I wanna project this point and this point. And if you remember from the previous episode, the reason we do this is because we're working on a new sketch and we need these points to line up with the sketch that we're getting ready to create of the spine and the keel. So I'm gonna go ahead and press okay there. Now let's go ahead and rotate around to our left view. And I'm going to go ahead and define the ending first. So I'm gonna say line tool from here to about there and then say okay. And now I am going to do the same thing from here to here. You can see here that I've got these matched up and press okay. And then I'm gonna come down to the bottom part and I'm going to do the same. So from here to there and press the little green check. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to add in these curved areas. So we're going to use the fit point spline and we're gonna go from here to right about here where it starts to curve. Let's go ahead and bring that down to about there and then press the little green check to say okay. Now we need to come in here and you'll notice that this is actually got a bend in it and we don't want that. So what we're going to use is we're going to use the tangent tool. So I'm going to say tangent and I'm gonna select this line because I want this to tangent off of that line. And now you can see, let me turn this off here really quick. You can now see that this line tangents nicely off into the next spline, which creates a nice smooth surface across the top. Now we're going to do the same for the bottom. Let me turn on my canvas here. Let's zoom in a little bit. Okay, we're gonna go from here to about there. Let's go ahead and 
get ourselves all the way into there. And that's looking pretty good. So that we need to do the same thing here as we did previously, which is we need to fix this tangency. So let's go ahead and select tangent. And I want this line right here to tangent off of that line. And that corrects that curvature so that way it comes off nice and smooth. And then finish sketch. So now we've got our spine and our keel in place. All right, let's talk a little bit about the horizontal stabilizer. So on the rear of the plane, at least on airlines, we have a taper in the rear where the, the fuselage narrows to the very tail end of the plane. Well, in that taper, you also have the fuselage which is rounded off, but the mount where we have to put our horizontal stabilizer is actually flat. So what we need to do is we need to create a flat surface, which is going to be a little bit different from the way that we did the sketching for the nose section. This time around, we're going to use construction lines in order to provide guides for how we're actually going to create this flat surface. And I call it a horizontal stabilizer cross because it looks like a cross. Um, and that's going to serve as our guide and help us create that flat surface, even though everything else around it is rounded off. So let me show you how to start doing that. In order for us to create the stabilizer cross, which we're going to put here at the rear of the plane where the elevator or the uh, stabilizer is going to be mounted, there are a couple of things that we need to do. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce you to another type of sketch, which is We've got our lines and our splines, but we can also create construction sketches, which are more like guidelines that we can use. So what we need to do is we need to create a couple of those first. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to activate the round fuse because that's the reference point that we're going to use. What we need is we need to know what the widest point is from here to here so that way, when we line up the cross, we also are going to put a guideline across in order to meet that point. So one of the ways that we can find that center point is by using what's known as a construction line or a construction spline. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and activate that. And then I'm going to create a line that comes from here down to right here. And you can see it's a dotted line, which is an indicator that this is now a construction line. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down here until it turns into, you see that triangle that popped up? That is telling us that is the exact center point of that line. And because we drew a line from down here, the very bottom of the fuselage to the very ridge or the top of the fuselage, that's our center point. So I'm gonna click that and I'm gonna come out here and I'm gonna make sure that I'm perpendicular to the ground. And you can tell right here, you've got this little cyan colored square, which means it is a right angle or a 90 degree angle. And also you can see through here, we've got 90 degrees. So go ahead and click that and select okay. Now you can see where our widest point is before it goes underneath the fuselage. So that's gonna be one of our reference points. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna finish this sketch because now we don't really need that at this second. And we need to create a construction plane. So let's go ahead and turn on our canvases. The construction plane needs to be here where the elevator is going to mount to the fuselage. So let's go ahead and create a construction plane and we're gonna go ahead and use that right there as our primary surface, say okay. Let's go ahead and now move this. And to move the construction plane, we press M for move. Let's go ahead and pull this over. Move that to there. And now we need to rotate our view. So that way we're looking straight down and you can see 
Our construction plane is down the center, which is where we created it. But what we need to do is we need that construction plane to be right here where our stabilizer is going to go. So let's go ahead and move this into place. And let's go ahead and rotate this. Zoom in here a little bit. Right about there looks good. So once we've got that in place, go ahead and press OK. And let's rotate around and you can see now we've got our construction plane where our stabilizer is going to be mounted. All right, now that we've got that in place, what we need to do is we need to create a cross. And that cross is going to allow us to create a flat surface because the fuselage obviously is rounded off and we can't have a rounded surface to mount a flat surface to. So what we're gonna do is we're going to create the horizontal stabilizer cross is what I'm calling it. So go ahead and activate that. And again, we're gonna make sure that we have construction turned on because we're only gonna use this as a guide. So turn on construction and let's go ahead and draw our cross. So we're gonna go from here straight back to there. And this diagram, you can see that the stabilizer is actually uh, turned up or in the nose down position. And so for that reason, I actually want this to be between the top and the lower part of the uh, track or the guide of the, um, the trim mechanism for the stabilizer. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create my cross like so. And let's turn this off really quick. And you can see now what we've got effectively is a cross. Now the next thing that we need to do is we actually need to continue this line because this is the widest point of the fuselage at this area. But if I turn this, you can see right here that it's higher than where the widest point in the primary part of the fuselage is. And for that reason, we need to use a new tool which we have not used so far, and that is the 3D sketch. So to use the 3D sketch, what basically 3D sketch is going to allow us to do is it's gonna allow us to not have a planar sketch. And a planar sketch basically means that it's on one plane. We need to actually come off of that plane. So by turning on 3D Sketch, we can now sketch outside of this flat surface. But we need to have a point to snap to, and that point is gonna be right here. So what we need to do is we need to create a point. We're gonna to go to Create, and then select Point. And now you'll notice that we can snap onto any surface that we want. But we want to snap right there, which is the widest point, and it snaps with the curvature of the fuselage and with this horizontal guideline. So we're gonna select that there and press Escape. Now that we've got our point there, now we can draw our line. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the fit point spline and I'm going to go from here to there and then press OK. Now, we've got a straight line and that's not quite how this fuselage works, right? Because it's actually gonna curve off. Okay, so we need to actually correct this. And in the previous episodes, the way we did it is we selected the line, we clicked horizontal vertical, but as you notice, that didn't work here. And that's because we're in 3D sketch mode and you can see the little error that popped up. So I'm gonna come in here, press once, press twice to select this. And now you, you'll see that it's selected because it turns blue. Right click and then say move. And then you'll get this little handlebar that comes up. So let's go ahead and now make this adjustment like so and get above that. 
and orient this that way. Let's go ahead and make sure that we're good to go here. And we are, so we're going to say OK. And then the next thing that I want to do is make sure that I am coming off of this line correctly. So a nice straight line, which I am. And that is our cross. Now, I still want to add additional surfaces here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another line from here. And we're going to come down to this point again. Press OK. And then we're going to do the same thing from here down to here. And then accept that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to draw two lines from here to here and then from there to there. Now you'll notice that these lines are not construction lines and we need them to be construction lines. So you can convert them by clicking on it and pressing construction. Same thing with the others and that will convert them into construction lines. And then we're going to repeat this process for the rear. So I'm going to create a construction. I'm going to go ahead and activate this so I don't have to go through that extra step. And there. And to there. And finish sketch. And there we have it. There is our horizontal stabilizers uh, mounting surface which is going to be flat and we use this cross in order to create a nice transition and these will serve as guides as we make our profiles uh, later on in the tutorial. Great so now that we've got that in place all we have to do now is we need to put in the profiles. Now the profiles are basically going to be the where the skin is going to wrap towards the rear of the plane. Now I'm calling them profiles because that's how we're going to use them when we use the loft tool and we're going to use the spine and the uh, lower spine or the keel line that we created early on as our rails. So let's go ahead and start start working on those profiles. Moving on into the next part, we're going to add the profiles, uh, which this is considered a profile when you're talking about the loft because this is the edge that we're going to use as the profile and the spine and keel are going to act as our rails. So what we need to do now is we need to add in those profiles. The way that we're going to go about doing that is the first thing that we have to take into consideration is our, our wing fairing. So if I turn on the starboard wing, let's go ahead and get that turned on. The starboard wing obviously still touches this part of the wing box, but we need to have a nice transition from this point into a tapering and narrowing fuselage. So what we need to do is we need to add a termination point where that fairing is going to terminate in the rear of the plane. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a construction plane. Let's go ahead and do that. And let's move this back. Now, because I'm not using the same model for this, this tail section, I'm going to estimate where a fairing is going to terminate. And I'm going to say it's probably going to be maybe somewhere around here. And then once I've got that in place, I'm going to press OK. And this now will allow me to create a new sketch. So let's go ahead and select Create Sketch. I want to create it on this uh, construction plane. And what we need to do is we need to transfer these intersecting lines. So in order to create these intersections, we need to use the intersect tool. Going to create and then under project include select intersect. And then when I hover over, you can see like in previous episodes, we've got the line there or the red dot right there. So select that and then right in here, 
We're gonna select this line because that's our outermost point with the compensation for the curvature that we have. And then down here. Okay, and then press okay. Now we'll be able to create our spline. So let's go ahead and turn off our 3D sketch. Make sure you don't have that turned on because we don't need it right now. Uh, then go back into it and let's go there, snap into there and snap into there. And then you can press the little green check to accept. Then we're gonna come into here and we're going to move these around. Let's go ahead and level that out and then do the same thing for that. Now, if we go to the rear view, what we can see is that this is protruding past the actual line or um, profile from our actual fuselage and it's protruding out here as well. So what we need to do is we need to make a couple of adjustments. So I'm gonna adjust this until I have a nice curvature that fits. And let's go ahead and make that horizontal, there we go. So we can see here, we've got a nice fit right there. Just that a little bit more. There we go. And then the same thing with this one, we're going to go ahead and pull this in. Now you'll notice we've got a gap right here and that's because the fuselage is actually turning in inward to taper towards the rear of the plane. So that's why we've got this gap here and that's why we created that guideline that came from the horizontal stabilizer cross that we created. And so all we have to do is make sure that this adjustment through here fits nicely. So let's go ahead and still adjust this a little bit so that way we've got a nice gradual turn there. We're gonna make sure we've got the same here. That we've got roughly a similar look. There we go. And then once that's done, we're gonna go ahead and accept that by pressing Finish Sketch. And there is our first profile or a ring partial ring that we've created. Now the next one that we're gonna create is actually going to be a midline right here uh, because we've got a lot going on here so we want to help the loft shape this correctly. So we're gonna go ahead and create another construction plane. We're gonna move this one in to, let's see here, maybe right about there, Let's see what we've got. I'm happy with that. So again, we're going to create a new sketch and then we're going to use the intersect tool. Let's get these in here and that midline and that one. Press OK. We're going to use our fit point spline again snapping in. Okay. Let's go ahead and make these adjustments. Let's get this horizontal, this one vertical, and that one horizontal. So now that we've got our constraints in, let's go ahead and get a perfect rear view. So that way we are fitting these to where these curvatures look accurate for the distance and the spacing from the previous profile. And to me, this actually looks fairly good. I'm going to adjust this maybe a little bit. Let's zoom in here and see what we've got so we don't get something unusual. And I think I'm actually happy with the way this looks. I'm gonna finish that sketch. All right, so now you can see we've got two of our profiles in. Now the next one is gonna be this point right here. 
And if you remember from the nose episode, what we did was we did a little bit of a hack in order to get a construction plane onto this surface because you can't do it without some other means and we want this point to line up perfectly. And the way we did that was if you remember, we used the box tool, we clicked in here and we created a box, accepted that and then we added a construction plane to that surface. And then what we did was we went ahead and deleted that. That way we have our construction plane here. Now let's go ahead and create our construction or our sketch on that plane there. And we're going to project, so I'm gonna press P, that point right there and press OK. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to intersect. So let's go ahead and select intersect tool. And I wanna intersect here and this time I also want to include this guideline and that guideline. The reason we want to do this is because this will help actually transition into the flat surface that we need right here. So let's go ahead then also intersect that point and press OK. And as before, we're going to use the fit point spline. We're going to come in here with all of these and press OK. Very nice. Go ahead and get this horizontal. And we want to make sure that this one is vertical. And there we go. All right, now we need to check a couple of things like we did before to make sure that this actually looks accurate. So we need to get in here and really take a look and see what we've got. Let's turn that off. And actually, I think we're looking pretty good here. Let's go ahead and shrink this down a little bit. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is because I want to flatten this curve out just a little bit more. There we go. And once I'm done with that, I'm gonna finish that one out. And we're gonna repeat this process for the center point of the cross and for the trailing edge of this. So let's go ahead and once again, we're gonna create a, uh, a box. There we go. Let's add our construction plane and delete the box. And then we're going to create sketch and we're going to project this point and this point. And then we're going to intersect the spine or the top ridge and the keel line. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use our fit point spline again between these points, select OK, and then from this point to this point. And this is different because we need to make sure we've got a flat line here. So I'm gonna switch over to my line tool. And there we go. All right, so zooming in here, we've got a hard line and that's not what we want. So what we're gonna do is we're going to create another tangent. So I'm going to select the tangent tool. And I'm gonna say I want this line to tangent off of this line. And you can see what it's done is it's created a nice curvature coming off of this line. We're gonna scroll down here and we're gonna do the same thing to this one. We want this line to tangent off of that line. Okay. So now it looks very strange and we're gonna just make a couple of adjustments here. So we're gonna go ahead and do these adjustments by, let's turn that back off. Let's 
go ahead and bring this down a little bit. And then this we're going to make horizontal. And then we're going to do the same thing with this one down here. Let's go ahead and make a slight adjustment here. And I'm not so happy about this just yet, so I'm going to move this out a little bit more. There we go. We want to make sure that this line is not going outside or past the, the one that came before it. So let's see, we are pretty much there, I think. Yeah. So I'm going to finish that sketch and then we're going to do one more, which is going to be at this point right here. So let's go ahead and create our box again. From right there. Okay, let's go ahead and add our construction plane. And let's go ahead and delete the box because we don't need it. And let's go ahead and create our sketch. And like before, we're going to press P for project and let's project this point. And then we're going to use the intersect tool to go from here to here. And then we're going to use our fit point spline as before between these points to accept that. And all we have to do now is we need to clean this up to make sure that it looks right. So let's go ahead and get that horizontal. This one we want vertical and that one we want horizontal. And let's see here. Let's make sure that everything is looking right. So let's go ahead and bring this in a little bit. There we go. Now from here it looks strange, but on the 777, this part right here actually tapers into kind of a, uh, a flat cone shape. And so this is actually going to give us that nice taper that's gonna close off to the end of the fuselage. And there we have it. So let's go ahead and finish that off. And now you can see we have got all of our profiles in place and how we used these construction lines in order to help guide us as we actually shaped this out. Now, one of the things that we need to work on is the fairing for the wing box to the rear of the fuselage because the wing box basically comes down straight where the wing joins up with the fuselage and then it makes kind of a, a hard turn to the underside of the plane. But the rest of the fuselage is cylindrical. So we need to create a fairing which is gonna create a nice aerodynamic transition from that harder corner edge of the wing box to the rear of the fuselage. So let's go ahead and start working on the rails that we need for the uh, fairing. In order for us to be able to create these fairings, what we need to do is add some rails. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to do this through a new tool that we haven't used up until now, but it is a type of construction plane. Uh, we're going to use a construction plane called plane along path. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow us to create a construction plane along a path. So let's go ahead and activate that tool. And what I want to do is come down here to this sketch right here. And at about the midpoint is where I'm going to add my construction plane. And the reason why I put it at that midpoint is simply because that is going to be roughly our widest point. So what I'm going to do is accept that by pressing OK, create a new sketch, and then we're going to use the intersect tool again. So we're going to go to intersect and we're going to intersect from here to there. 
and then I'm gonna go ahead and press OK to accept that and what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the fit point spline and we're gonna go ahead and connect those two say OK and what I need to do is I need to make sure that this is going to be perpendicular to that let's go ahead and rotate this around and there we go I went ahead and used the horizontal tool to make sure that I'm perfectly horizontal or perpendicular to the wing box corner edge here and I'm going to go ahead and accept that so I'm going to finish sketch now the next thing that I want to do is I want to create another construction plane along a path and this time I'm going to add it just above the end of this curvature so right about there select OK create a new sketch and then we're going to intersect again from here to here now if you zoom in you'll notice how close this intersection point is and that is why I went ahead and put it up here higher above the curve because if I would have made it off of here it would have actually fallen below this line and that's what we don't want so I'm gonna go ahead and select that and accept now I can once again use my fit point spline between those two points press OK let's go ahead and get this like so there we go so now you can see how this is starting to come together and then finish that sketch and we're going to do the same thing down here so let's go ahead and say construction plane along a path we're gonna go right about there and then let's go ahead and create a new sketch along that I'm gonna create an intersect and it looks to me like we actually need to reposition that because it's coming in between these two and we don't want that so let's go ahead and cancel out of that and let's uh, finish sketch and let's go ahead and go into our construction planes right here turn that on let's go ahead and move that I pressed M on my keyboard let's move this over a little bit more press OK and let's uh, delete this sketch because we're not using that one because that was the one that we started just a second ago go ahead and create a sketch and we're going to intersect again and now we've got a good intersection point so we're going to select that and there and then like before we're going to use the fit point spline tool between that point and that point let's go ahead and get this horizontal there we go and now you can see roughly how this is coming together now this is of course for demonstration purposes but um, in production I probably would have still made another adjustment and brought this in a little bit closer but you kind of get the point so I'm just gonna move on from here now I'm gonna go ahead and add another one so I'm gonna finish that create another path and I'm gonna say right about here let's go ahead and create a sketch on that same thing let's go ahead and intersect our points here so one there and one there and then we're going to use our fit point spline and then we're going to come in here and make sure that let's get around here make that horizontal there we go and 
we're almost there. We just need to get one up here. So let's go ahead and create another one. So let's finish that sketch. Construction plane, plane along a path. And we're gonna put one right about there. Create a sketch there. And then let's go ahead and intersect once again. And there we go with that one. And a fit point spline. And like before, we're going to repeat this to get that horizontal. And then the last thing that we need to do is we need to get this very last one in here. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to use this widest point here and I'm going to create a box on that so that way I can get... There we go. And now I'm going to create a construction plane on the top surface. Let's go ahead and delete that box because we don't need it and create a sketch and then we're going to project this point because we need that point press ok and then we're going to use the intersect tool to intersect there and then press ok and then this is actually going to be a straight line we don't need to do a curved line because both of these are on the widest point of the fuselage. So let's go ahead and add that line. There we go. And now you can see we've got our transition from this flat area here with our fairing and it smoothly transitions to the bottom of the fuselage. And then finish sketch. So there we go. We're making good progress. All right, so moving right along, when we did the wing design, if you remember, we used a plugin or an add in called Airfoil DAT to Spline. And we used that to import a DAT file which created the airfoil for us. Now, some people had a little bit of trouble working with it. So, for this tutorial, I'm going to show you another way or an alternative to creating an airfoil. It's manual and it's not as precise, but you can get away with it. So it's up to you either way. You can either use that add-in or you can do it the way that I'm going to show you here. So let's go ahead and add in the airfoils for the uh, vertical stabilizer and the airfoil for the horizontal stabilizer. Let's dig in. Okay. Uh, because we're doing this a little bit differently than we did the wing and we're not going to use the add-in, going, I'm going to show you this alternative where you actually can manually add an airfoil. And we're going to use the canvas tool. But before we can do that, we need to have a surface in which we can work with. And if you remember from the very beginning, this top line here is actually curved. So what we need to do is actually use the... Um, plane along an access tool in order to make this work. So let's go ahead and turn on our canvas again so that way we can see roughly where the vertical stabilizer is and this is roughly the midpoint right about here. So I'm going to go ahead and say construct along path and I want this to be right about there. Now this next step is important because you're not going to want to rotate this by selecting this. So if you watch what happens, when I select here and then press move, the move is actually where my cursor was and that's not the point that we want. So I'm gonna escape out of that because that's not where I want to do the rotation. I actually want it to be dead center inside of this construction plane. So let me go ahead and turn off that what I'm going to do is under the construction plane, let me go ahead and rename this one and call this one VSTAB root. 
And now that that's now that I've actually activated it from the browser tree, now I'm going to press move. And what you'll see is that it put it right on the line, which is the center point when we created our construction plane. Now I can come in here and actually rotate this 90 degrees. And let's go ahead and get a left view. And now you can see that our construction plane is absolutely perpendicular to the center point, even though it extends out above the fuselage here and above the fuselage at the rear. And that's perfectly okay. We just need that canvas to be in there. So let's go ahead and press OK. And then what we're going to do is we're going to insert a new canvas. And make sure that you've picked out a, um, an airfoil that you're going to use. I'm going to use the Naka 0012 airfoil. And let's see, insert from there. And I want to put it on that right there. And let me turn on my canvases so I can actually see it. Turn these off. And as you can see, it is perpendicular. So I need to go ahead and rotate this 90 degrees. Now the last thing that I need to do is make sure that this center line within the airfoil is at the center right on top of the spine. And it looks like I did a good job in cropping this because it is perfectly centered. I'm going to go ahead and press OK. And there we have it. There's our airfoil. Uh, now let me go ahead and double check and make sure that I've got the right size. So let's go ahead and press that. And it looks like pretty much I'm dead on. Go ahead and look at this side view. Actually, no, it looks like I'm a little bit too large. So in order to adjust this, what you do is you go into the canvas and right click and say edit canvas. And from here, you can shrink this down and position this where it needs to go. So let's uh, move this, probably shrink this down just a hair more. Let's see here. Can I go too far? Nope, looks like we're in good shape. So I'm gonna go ahead and accept that. And now we've got our airfoil there. And I'm gonna turn these off because I don't need them right now. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually manually create this airfoil. Now this is not recommended, particularly if you're working on wings and you need an exact airfoil, uh, but I'm just showing you the alternative here if you don't wanna use a add-in. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're going to create a new sketch we're going to put it on this construction plane, which is the one that we use to place our canvas. And then we're going to use the fit point spline. And let's see here. Actually, you know what? Before we do this, I want to have a good snap in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a quick projection. So press P and project the spine like so. And that's going to give us this projected line so that way I can actually snap my fit point spline to it. So let's go ahead and go to the top view. And let's get back into my sketch. And we're going to use the fit point spline. So we're going to go from here. Let's see here. And I'm going to just use these guidelines as my point references, like so. There, and one more to go, right there. And you can see that I'm snapped to the line because I get the little X right there. So I'm gonna say right there and press okay. 
Now the only thing is we need to make a slight adjustment here because our curvature is not correct. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate this around and then let's get that perpendicular and then pull this in until I'm roughly in the right place. And finish sketch. Now if I turn that off, you can see we've got our airfoil or a semi airfoil where our vertical stabilizer is going to go. Now we're going to repeat this process again. This time we're going to use it for the horizontal stabilizer. So let's go ahead and activate. Let's see here. Let's see where we are. This is the case for why you should name your construction planes. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. H stab. And I'm going to use the same airfoil that I did before. So I'm going to go ahead and insert a canvas. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and get this placed. So let's get to a profile view. So I'm looking at it straight on. Let's enlarge this. And let's turn on our profile so that way I can match this as best as I can. So let's see. And I want this line right here, this, this center, the cord line, to be right on the center line of the cross that we created. So right there. And then once you like that, Go ahead and accept it and I went ahead and scaled it while I was already in there and now what I'm going to do is turn on my construction plane again and I am going to create a sketch on that plane. Let's go ahead and turn this off. All right now because of the wonderful tool the mirror tool I'm only going to do one side of this and then I'm going to reflect it to the top side because this is a symmetrical airfoil. So like before, I'm going to use my fit point spline and it looks like what I need to do first is I need to once again project my center line here. There we go. And now I can actually snap to it. It's a little bit hard to see but you can kind of tell right there the uh, purplish magenta line is right there. So let's go back into the fit point spline. We see the little X. So let's come in here and start tracing this out. Zoom out a little bit. There we go. Now, you don't necessarily need to create this many points, but the reason why I am is because when we do the um, horizontal stabilizer tip, making the points closer will allow it to scale much more easily without having anomalies or deformations. Uh, let's go ahead and get this adjusted. So let's see. There we go. Pull this in a little bit. There we go. Okay, so now I don't need this sketch anymore, so I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. What we're going to do is we're going to select this spline, and then we're going to use the Create Mirror, and then there we go. And the mirror line that I want to use is this center line or the cord line that we projected and press OK. And now we've got a perfectly symmetrical airfoil. And finish sketch. There we go. So now we've got our airfoil bases in place or the root for the vertical stabilizer and the horizontal stabilizer. The only thing that's left now is to create replicas of these and move them out to the edges. 
Okay, so what we need to do is we need to create a copy of this so we can duplicate that for the, the top end of the vertical stabilizer. So let's go ahead and select that. And you can see right here when you select a sketch, like so, you'll see the little squiggly right here that tells you which sketch it is. But I'm gonna go ahead and name that VStab root. And then I'm going to left click, and then I'm gonna say move copy. And then over in the uh, move copy palette, we're gonna turn on create copy. So that way we're not moving it, we're actually gonna create this copy here. There we go. And let's turn on our profile view so that way we can get it up to here. And then what we want to do is we want to resize this. And the way that we do that is, let's go ahead and activate that. And we're gonna say modify and use the sketch scale tool. And the entity is going to be that. And the point that we're going to scale from is actually going to be this leading point. And then you can just pull this in like so. And let's go ahead and get this moved into place. So that way we're scaling this correctly. Let's try this one more time and scale it just a little bit more. We want to use this point. Let's go ahead and then scale that a little bit more to, uh, maybe that's a little too much. There we go. Now we've got that and we're going to go ahead and we're going to replicate the same thing with this sketch. So let's see, this is gonna be our H stab root and right click on it to move create copy, select create copy and go ahead and pull this out. And then like before, we're going to use the footprint this time There we go. And let's go ahead and position this to right there and accept it. And then the last thing that we need to do is we need to scale this. So let's go ahead and select that. And I don't know if you've noticed, but I sometimes will double click on the sketch in order to activate it, which is a quick way to get it activated. And let's go ahead and say modify, sketch scale. And I want to scale both of these. And then this is going to be my scale point. And back to the top view, so that way I'm scaling it correctly. Let's go ahead and There we go, press OK, and there we go. Now we've got our wingtip airfoil and we've got our vertical stabilizer tip as well. Okay, so we've covered a lot of ground so far. Now it's time to actually create the skin using the loft tool for all of the airfoils and the fuselage that we designed in Sketch. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Now that we've got our entire sketch ready to go, now we can start working on the skin of the plane. And as you know, as we've been working through this entire series, the skin is being used as a cutting tool to cut our formers and our bulkheads and our ribs and spars. Well, we're gonna continue with that same exact thought process. So we're gonna go ahead and start working on lofting this. 
but I did notice that there is one slight uh, error that we made early on, which is this line that goes between the wing box former or bulkhead to the ring former uh, that is here does not continue to our fairing terminating ring, which is here. So what we need to do is we need to address that correction before we work on our loft. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in to this particular sketch and I'm going to go ahead and edit sketch. And we need to turn on 3D sketch mode because this line, this is on a plane that is not going to be on the same plane and axis as this one over here. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, turn on 3D sketch and we're going to create a point like we did before. And this time we're gonna create it at this point. And then once you have that in place, we're gonna go ahead and exit out by hitting escape, which uh, removes the point tool. And then we're going to create a line, a fit point spline that goes from this point over to this point and then press OK. Now we need to go ahead and smooth this out so we need to create a tangency. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the tangent tool. I want this line, there we go, to be tangent with this one. You can see now it's smoothed this out and you can see the tangency icon right here to let you know what kind of constraint is at this point. And now let's go ahead and press finish. Okay, now that we've fixed that, now we can start lofting. Now we're going to use the surface loft tool. And if it's not in the menu here, you can go to create and select loft from here. And we're going to use these as the profile. So I'm gonna say that all the way around as my profile and then my former terminating or my uh, fairing terminating former ring right here. Okay, now I'm going to select this as a rail. So I pressed on the rails here to create a new rail. And you'll notice that it says it's missing a profile up here with these red and that's because there is no profile between this point because we haven't selected it. So just select that and that will correct that problem. So let's go ahead and scroll down here and add this one. Again, we have the same issue, so no problem. We select that. And then we're gonna come through and select each one of these that we created for the um, fairing. So that one, and then let's go ahead and do that one. And then once we're done, press OK. I'm gonna turn sketches off really quick, and you can see how we now have this interesting transition and where the fairing is right here, just as we had intended to. So let's go ahead and continue this. So we're going to create our next loft. So activating the loft tool, we're gonna to go from this point to here to here. And then we're gonna go ahead and activate these two there and there, and then that, all the way to the rear. And all we have to do is select our rails, which is this top one, and rotating around to the bottom, there we go. And then press OK. Now you can see we've got the body shaping up. And there is our little flat surface right here, exactly the way we wanted it. And the only thing that we need to loft now are our airfoils. So let's go ahead and activate that. Select that, and we're gonna loft up to here. Oh, not quite right there. Select that, and then there we go, and press OK. And then we just need to do the horizontal stabilizer. So we're going to loft from here 
to there. Let's do the top side as well. Oops. Say OK. And then we're going to do the top side because we did those as a mirror. And there. And let's see. I have to zoom in a little bit to get it accurate. There we go. And press OK. And there you have it. All right, that's looking like a pretty nice empennage, isn't it? It's a really satisfying feeling when you go through all of this and you're starting with lines and sketches and you're not quite sure how it's gonna turn out. And then when you add the loft to it and it actually becomes this beautiful shape, it is definitely a satisfying feeling and I hope you guys are enjoying it. Now, there's one last step that we need to do, which is the bulkheads and the formers. Now, we've done this several times before, so I'm not gonna go into detail, but it's just gonna be a quick refresher of how you can add the surfaces and position them within this part of the fuselage. Now, before we go any further, I also want to remind you that this area has significant aerodynamic forces placed on it because of the vertical stabilizer and the horizontal stabilizers. So you need to make sure that you take into consideration how you are going to pass the loads through into the fuselage and make sure that it's light yet strong. If you guys would like me to if you guys would like me to do a video on that particular topic, please leave a comment below. Uh, for the rest of you that are into trying to figuring it out yourself, you can do it. So let's go ahead and do that quick refresher. All right, to close things up, we're gonna just add in where our bulkheads and formers are gonna go. And I'm not gonna go into too much detail here because we've done this many times before, uh, but I'm just gonna get this started and then you can uh, decide how you wanna continue on your own. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a construction plane and I'm gonna use that as my uh, starting surface. And let's go ahead and move this in here. Press OK. And then if you remember what we did is we actually created a surface. So the way we did that is we created a sketch on that construction plane and then using the two point rectangle, we created a rectangle shape. And there we go. Now I've since learned something new within Fusion 360 that I didn't realize before. You can actually extend a little bit past this cutting edge when we make this cut. And I'll show you here in a second what I mean. Let's go ahead and finish that sketch. And then let's use the um, patch tool under surface and fill in this sketch. Press OK. And then I don't need that sketch anymore, so we can go ahead and delete that. Then I'm going to select, and I'm going to use the Create Pattern tool, if you remember that. Let's go ahead and select that. And then I want to use the Y axis right here as my axis there. Let's go ahead and pull this out and I want to create five bulkheads and formers. Let's pull that out to about here. Press OK. And this is where um, I didn't realize that you could do this until recently, but we're going to cut these out. So I'm going to go to Modify, Split Face. I'm going to go ahead and select these. There we go. And then the splitting tool is going to be the fuselage skin. Let's get in underneath there. Yep. And then as you can see right now, it's only cutting where the red is. But if you come over here and say extend splitting tool, it might take a second, but you can see that it's actually extended past this ridge or this edge line. So I'm gonna go ahead and press okay. And now you can see that they're actually cut. So I'm gonna go ahead and select those and I'm holding shift to select multiple and then press delete. 
And there you can see now our formers and bulkheads are right there, which is much faster than the way we were doing it before. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and mirror some of these. Create a mirror. And the mirror plane is going to be right there. And let's go ahead and mirror these. There we go. And modify, nope, create, mirror. And we want that to be our mirror right there. Press OK. And the last thing that we want to mirror is our horizontal stabilizer. Select mirror plane, which is going to be that. And there we have it. There is our empennage. Before you guys take off, there are two things that I wanna let you guys know. One is I added a new page to my website, which is going to allow you guys to contact me directly to let me know which topics you guys are interested in and to request actual episode topics. So if you guys have any ideas or suggestions or want a particular topic covered, use the link that's down below in the description and that will get the message directly to me and it will also help steer where this channel goes to make sure that I'm covering the topics that are useful to everyone. And number two is the next episode. Um, hopefully I'll have that out within like seven to 10 days or so. It is the episode Longerons and Stringers, which a lot of you guys have been asking about that, but I wanted to hold off until we had the primary structure and design of the airplane done. Now we can go ahead and start binding all of this together with stringers and longerons. Until then everyone, take care.